mild uh, oppairs and then uh, non oppairs plasmids and then neoadjuvant uh, adjuvant and it is uh, in modern to severe pain we use strong oppairs like morphine we along with the non oppairs and adjuvant um, and in that fourth there is a stage four step four we will discuss later on you see in every step there is the uh, combination of uh, adjuvant therapy here because sometimes patients suffer from anxiety, depression, like that. The World Health Organization analysis leader for cancer pain relief provides a stepwise approach to managing pain in patients with cancer. Uh, again, repetition, uh, strong, uh, first we have we'll got another three minutes. Morphine is the most useful first line step three of yours, however, there may, are many alternatives to morphine now. At any step in the analysis data arrangement, analysis can be used. Instable we have mild to uh, now elaborately something we have is non oppressed drugs like acetamprene and non steroidal antinatural drugs such as aspirin and ibuprofen. Most non oppressed can be purchased over the counter without a prescription. Moderate to severe pain. Opiates, morphine, hydromorphine, oxycodone, hydrocodone, codeine, fentanyl, and methadone. For breakthrough pain, you see, it is very important to manage the breakthrough pain or continuous or chronic pain. Rapid onset opiates, first acting oral morphine, fentanyl in a lozenge or sucker form. These forms of fentanyl are absorbed from your mouth as you suck on them. They are not shallow. A short acting opioid which relieves breakthrough pain quickly is often used to have a long acting opioid for chronic pain. Tingling and burning pain. Antidepressants are given here like amitriptyline, imipramine, doxepine, and triazodone. Taking an antidepressant does not mean that we are uh, the patient is suffering uh, from uh, is suppressed or for mental illness. Antiepileptics, gabapentin, taking an antileptic does not mean that the patient is going to have seizures. Pain caused by so swelling, steroid like prednisone and dexamethasone. That is the dose and, yeah. Typically, interventional management of cancer pain does not subside, substitute for other modalities but can improve pain control and allow for a reduction in systemic medications and their side effects. Where there are unacceptable side effects for oral or parental appears, then invasive methods may be preferred. And with our knowledge, there is our limitation. I am going to make the next slide. Our limitation as on you see. Before we told that, WSO has three steps. Uh, WSO leader has three steps. You see in the first, second, and third. But our limitation on the fourth step, where there is intractable pain. Usually, with the oncologist, when intractable pain, uh, with prescription, I mean, uh, for, um, I mean, maybe it's intern, yeah, parental or tablet form or I mean, rectal, yeah, subjective form, if fail, we generally use radiotherapy. Non-medical radiotherapy, and we suppose if the patient is suffering from breast cancer, body metastasis, or prostate cancer, if we apply uh, radiotherapy, then the patient usually we give 3,000 uh, 3, in uh, three weeks. So, yeah, uh, 10 uh, in three weeks. So, so uh, about 90% patient we get lip pain from pain. But sometimes when we fail to invasive uh, intractable pain, we, we, we become helpless. Then our option is in this, I think, in step four, we need some intervention procedure there. Barriers to treatment. Barriers related to healthcare professionals. Barriers related to patients. Barriers related to the health healthcare system. 
In conclusion, an active multidisciplinary approach is required to manage pain in patients with advanced cancer. Pain can be multifactorial, therefore, may require several different analgesics along with a specialist palliative denial and pain management. We, as oncologists, sometimes fall in hopeless situation when conservative team fail to control pain. It is a painful situation for us as oncologists. I think this is the international pain specialty which can rescue the cancer patient and oncologist as well in this health situation. Lastly, I will tell that as a whole, oncologist, medical, uh, med medicine specialist, or any hospice specialty, uh, I think uh, there is, a, I think, um, in my different data in the world shows that there is a lack of education for pain management. So I will suggest that for cancer management, those especially who deal with the cancer, cancer they have to uh, give more uh, pain management education in future. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mula Wadula. We appreciate his concern about the time. Thank you again. The now, the next speaker is Dr. Kausar Sota. He is an associate professor of Berlin, Joint Secretary of Bangladesh Society of Anesthesia. He is the first WIP award in Bangladesh. And because of Kausar Sota, Bangladesh is included in this chapter now. He is the vice chair of uh, WIP chapter in uh, this region. He will talk about this evidence, what evidence says regarding intervention in spine and ca cancer pain. Causes for the please. Your time is 15 minutes. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, dear the chairman of the station and co-chairmen, and uh, dear uh, faculties and delegates from home and abroad. Uh, so, my topic is uh, today uh, evidence-based common intervention on pain management procedure for spine and cancer pain. You know the theme of the, this uh, uh, session is the spine pain and the cancer pain. Uh, we have tried to uh, include all the things, uh, spine and uh, cancer, and what is our roles actually as interventional pain specialists. Uh, I'm uh, grateful to, uh, especially uh, Dr. Obadullah uh, Bhatti uh, and uh, uh, our uh, general chief, the pediatrist. Uh, they have uh, 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 told about their uh, limitations actually for the pain patients. Uh, not all the patients, usually they are doing very well. Uh, all the patients, their patients almost, uh, they are managing uh, very nicely. but. Uh, 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 with few patients, they are falling very uh, difficult situation. Uh, they and as well their patients also. And on that uh, difficult situation, uh, how we can help them actually? Uh, this is the theme of uh, my lecture. So, uh, and another thing, what we are doing actually? Is it evidence based? What we are doing? So, what should do? What should not do? Should know. The intervention of pain specialists that is very important also so uh, I want to go a little bit uh, back of uh, evidence-based medicine uh, when you go, uh, go to treat any patient as a physician you have to uh, think about what is the purpose of the medicine and second is how do you decide what to do. These two fundamental questions is come in front of you. And uh, this is the evidence-based medicine. This is the answer, actually. So what is evidence-based medicine? It is important for all subjects. What is evidence-based medicine? In the earliest time, there was, there was uh, no evidence. Whatever uh, surgeon or whatever the medical uh, physician wants to be doing, but Mr. Uh, uh, Professor Sackett et al. Uh, they uh, define the uh, evidence-based medicine like this. 
evidence-based medicine is the conscientious, explicit, and judicious use of current best evidence in making decisions about the care of individual patients. So if you track back for the evidence-based medicine, evidence-based medicine origins can found in ancient Greece, and you will find the interventions for the efficacy has existed since the time of the Vipnesina. He's a, a very important person, as those who are uh, 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 read uh, the articles, the journals, uh, you, uh, of course, you know about the Cochrane database, Cochrane library. Yeah. So, <clears throat> he's uh, Archie Cochrane, he's a Scottish epidemiologist. He published a book in 1971, after a long time, of Ignacina and uh, uh, he published Effectiveness and the Efficacy. And this book strongly criticized the lack of reliable evidence behind many of the commonly accepted healthcare interventions at that time. And these uh, two important persons from McMaster University Medical School uh, Research Group, David Sackett, and uh, Gordon Kuwait, they coined the term evidence-based medicine. Yes, this is true. This is a pyramid. How do evidence, what, what, what is, how much, how more evidence, this is, the, this is the way to identify. And in this pyramid, in the base, there is background information, expert opinion, and in the topmost, is the meta-analysis. So the meta-analysis is uh, important uh, for, to, uh, 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 for the evidence-based uh, medicine. And if you see the downwards uh, meta-analysis, then systematic review, then critically appraised topics, then critically appraised inter, uh, individual articles, then randomized control trials, cohort studies, case control studies, case studies, case reports, then at the lower part, that is the expert opinion and the background information. These are the books uh, of evidence-based medicine of uh, different disciplines. Uh, uh, and uh, this book is uh, for the pain practitioner actually. This is important for uh, uh, interventional uh, pain specialist. And these are the very important persons, uh, uh, those who are working uh, to uh, make a, uh, uh, protocols and uh, recommendations and uh, for the evidence-based intervention of practice. And in the topmost left side is the present WIP president, uh, is Janhan Jundar. So how uh, the interventional uh, procedures, what we do actually for the spine pain and the cancer pain, uh, 